And now the omnibus edition of Wagoner's Walk. Debbie Franks is delighted at the prospect of an early return to the Herald. It was like the US Cavalry. Totally. What? Liz turning up out of the blue last night. Me and Sam were having our biggest battle yet. Oh, I wish you wouldn't keep thinking of it like that, Debbie. You know, babies don't cry on purpose to spite you like. Oh, yeah. They can't help it. It don't mean they've got it in for their mum. So why is it you can settle him better than I can? It's because he reckons you're an ally. You love him. Do I? Of course you do. I'm starting to wonder, Carol. And I think it's because you love him that he cries so much. Oh, Carol, how'd you work that one out? Look, he sees you in a state, he gets worried about you, and he starts yelling. Sure. It makes sense. You're tense, so he can't relax. I get tense because he doesn't bloody relax. But which comes first? I don't know. It all started so long ago. <laughs> he was only born a few weeks ago. I know. Seems like years to me. Yeah, I must admit, having a kid does do funny things to time. Funny? Oh, come on, Deb. You've enjoyed yourself. Now and then. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There was ten minutes last Tuesday when Sam and I looked like we were pals. He was very quiet last night. Yeah, I know. So what's the catch? Well, it's like I was saying before, he reacts to your mood. You were feeling cheered up because you'd been offered this job by Liz. Mm hmm Well, his mum felt better, so Sam felt better. He told you all this, did he? Yeah. Well, in his way. Well... Since you have this great thing going between you... Oh, as have I said. Well, suppose I was to slip you a few quid for looking after him, like. Oh, I don't know. Oh, please, Carol. Shall I get him fixed up in a proper nursery? You need the extra money, I know that. Yeah, but... I couldn't take money off you, Deb. Don't be so daft. I'll be back on full salary. Earning more than I used to. It's a proper editorial job Liz wants me for. Oh. And you're tired to looking after moonshine anyway. I know. Well, what's the objection then? It's too soon. Too soon for what? For you to go and leave him. Sam won't mind. Of course he'll mind. He likes you. But it's not the same thing, is it? Okay, forget it. I'll find a baby minder somewhere. Oh, no, Debbie. Well, what else am I supposed to do? I don't understand you, Carol. Just now you were saying it was a good thing for me and Sam that I've landed this job. Now you're trying to put a spoke in it. Look, not on purpose. It's... It... Well, it's just that it sounds like an exciting job and that, but will you end up ignoring Sam altogether? Well, it's not very likely. You won't be looking after him at night time for me, will you? Well, you promise you'll come straight back from work as soon as you can each day? Yes, miss. I'm not kidding, Debbie. Sorry. I'll promise you, Carol. Outside of office hours, Sam Franks will have my undivided attention. You hear that, mister? There you are. Even he approves. <sighs> I'm fed up with washing dirty glasses. At last. What's that? The collapse of the Jesse Brewer smile. I don't know what you're looking so pleased about. <laughs> Just nice to know you're human, after all. I see. You didn't think I was human before? Of course I did. It's been everything else. What are you going on about, Liz? You're a lovely person, Jesse. Oh, yes. Except when it comes to the one bit of pub work that no one else I've ever met can stand. Clearing up after closing time. I never minded a bit of hard work. Yeah, but to do it day after day and singing a song and looking happy? Well, I'm not today. You're right. And I may not tomorrow. Oh. I've been making a right fool of myself. Well, breaking things again. Well, you could say that. Hey, come on, love. You can't help being accident prone. I ought to be more careful when it comes to dealing with people, though. Ah, you've had a row with George, have you? Ah, you shouldn't worry about it. I'm doing it all the time. We always manage to patch things up. It wasn't a row. Not a proper one. It's just that... Oh, I suddenly realise he's sick of the sight of me. I don't believe it. Oh, you should have seen his face. I took a steak and kidney pie across for his supper last night. Oh, lucky bloke. George didn't think so. He told me I'd have to find someone else to take it off me. I probably meant he'd already eaten. Oh, I don't think so. He didn't make that excuse. <laughs> and then he walked off down the road with Sophie, and he's got her to do the cleaning for him instead of me. Now, yeah, look, look, perhaps, perhaps you've been rushing things. George is bound to take a while to get over Kath. <laughs> well, he took long enough to get around to marriage the first time. But I don't want to marry him. You don't? Well, no. 
No, not really, no. Well, there was a moment when... But no. Oh, I was quite happy to set up for being friends. That's why I started to keep my distance when I thought he was really well off in case some people got the wrong idea about it. He's not exactly broke. No, but it's all tied up in that house, whereas when it comes to cash, I'm much better off. So then, in, instead of stupidly keeping my distance, I'll be stupidly... Didn't keep your distance. Oh, clumsy as usual. Oh, what am I going to do, Cliff? I know I ought to keep out of everyone's way for a while, but... Oh, the thought of hanging about in this pub between the opening times. It's not my idea how to spend a Saturday afternoon. Oh, it's good at the pictures. It could do, but I don't much like the stuff they put on these days. Oh, back in Oxfordshire, I'd have gone for a walk. Well, there's the heath. That's true. Hey, why don't we both go? Well, don't you want to go home? No, no, there's no rush. Shirley will join us studying. And, well, I need a bit of exercise. Uh, helping George move made me realize how unfit I am. I was still playing rugby last season, you know. Now, uh, shifting beer kegs is my limit. You're sure you're up to, boy? You bet, as long as you bring some of that cash you're talking about. Why? Well, so you can treat me to tea in the high street at the end of it all. Oh, you cheeky so and <laughs> That's right. But it's made you smile again. <laughs> And where have you been, my child? Oh, I went for a walk. Oh, nice. Oh, don't be like that, sure. It's nearly six o'clock, Cliff. Even when you stay on boozing with dolls, you're usually back by half four. I was worried. Well, I didn't have a single drink after hours today. I went for a walk instead. If you let me know, I could have come with you. <laughs> I thought I was giving you a good chance to get on with that, that essay you're supposed to be writing. Thanks. Well, I did. You've got notes and things you're supposed to be writing up, too. Yes, teacher. I'll do it as soon as I can. Anyway, I, I wasn't just walking for fun. It was a uh, sort of fever. Oh, too. Oh, Jessie, she was feeling a bit fed up. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she found out she'd been getting on George's nerves a bit. Oh, more than a bit. Oh, yeah, he's told you about it then, has he? He was beginning to think she'd moved into number one along with him and Arthur. Well, she was only being friendly, but now she knows she overdid it. Oh, well, that's something, I suppose. So she's keeping her distance, but she just didn't want to hang around the pub all afternoon. And she couldn't go walking on her own? I suppose she could have, but she wanted company. I thought she'd saw enough of you at the pub. <laughs> Doesn't look like it, does it? She even treated me to a cream tea. She what? <laughs> you heard. I'll have to keep an eye on you. Why? Well, in case she thinks she can get away with switching her attention from George to you. Oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> Do you think uh, George might turn out to be jealous? <laughs> I don't know about George, but I might. Oh, go on, I'll behave myself, I promise. <laughs> you better. So you enjoyed your walk, did you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Except uh, that we bumped into Debbie and the baby. Oh. Well, I did my best to behave like they got nothing to do with me, but... Oh, I don't know, love. It still gets to me, you know. I know. It's going to take time. Yeah. Though. Still, what should we do this evening to take our minds off all that? Well, first off, you can help me tidy this place up a bit. Why? Because it needs it and because Morris is coming to supper. Morris? Oh, you're going to come here the evening to ourselves. No. He was feeling miserable after being stuck on his own for the weekend, so he rang me. I see. Doesn't he see enough of you when you're at the paper? No, not nearly enough. But unlike your Jessie, he doesn't mind seeing both of us together. Oh, that's nice of him. Yeah, isn't it? So get over him, boyo. I've tried her home number and there's no answer. Thank you, Dickon. Well, if Jill Moon can't be bothered to turn up on time, we'll have to start without her. I'd like this Monday's meeting to be as speedy as last Monday's, by the way. That's as may be. But I fancy there are a good few issues to be discussed. All in good time, Morris. Can I first present to you all a major change which only Jill and Debbie know about, unless, of course, they've passed it on? I didn't have a chance to. Why should they know first, anyway? Because it directly concerns them. Oh, yes, but... Please, Maury. On Friday, I had a meeting with Milton Monk, and against his conservative judgment, managed to persuade him that we ought to axe the woman's page. You what? I've always rather enjoyed reading that. Precisely. The sort of things covered by it are no longer exclusively aimed at women. Unless Dickens a secret knitter. Oh. <laughs> if you care to look at a few back copies, Gray, you won't find many knitting patterns. <laughs> Sorry, Liz, I was being flippant. Were you? Well, if I might continue. In place of a woman's page, I wish to put a section which will be called Day to Day. Why? Because it's concerned with day to day knitting. And to expand on why Jill and Debbie know about all this before the rest of you, I have asked Debbie to edit this new section, not Jill. That's terrific. Well done, Debbie. Thank you, thank you. So now Dickon will be able to read that page with a clear conscience. Yes, 
Gray, just as women have always been able to read the sports page which you're taking over with a clear conscience. Oh, I'm taking over the sports page? Typecasting, just because he's an Aussie. Do you mind? There are some non-sporting Australians. But as it happens, I do know a thing or three about it. So do I. Uh, Dickon, I'm afraid you're still stuck with the checkout column. Oh. Well, I quite enjoy that, being the fearless investigator type. Mate, uh, I see a word now. If you've all finished congratulating yourselves. Here we go. That's right, here we go. Now, as I see it, what's happening here is the thin end of the wedge. And what wedge is that, Morris? I'm talking about soft, flabby women's journalism. Oh, come oh, on, dear. But Liz has just taken a step away from that. Look, you don't know anything about it, Sonny. Come on, man. I might be new to the Hampstead Herald, but I'm not new to the profession. Well, in that case, you're as gullible as the rest of them. The motive behind getting rid of the woman's page is bit by bit to turn the whole of the Herald into a woman's paper. That oh. is utterly ridiculous. Is it? Yes. Now, can we go on to discuss the sort of items the day-to-day section might cover? I haven't finished yet. Then I'm afraid you'll have to save it for some other time. Debbie, have you had any thoughts since we last met? You're in early, Rob. Earlier than usual, you mean? Compared to the last few weeks? No. I just didn't expect to see you here yet. I was also, in a roundabout way, expressing pleasure at seeing you. <laughs> How are things? Fine. Unlike some of these placemats, they're getting a bit frayed round the edges. Which is how I've been feeling these last few days. Doesn't show. Oh, thanks. Now, if I'd thought about it, I could have picked up some nice mats in Mykonos. Not enough for every table, unless you were willing to abandon the rest of your luggage. That's true. I should think Priors must seem a bit down-to-earth for you after Mykonos. Well, there's nothing wrong with being down-to-earth. No. But Matt and I both lived a fairly glamorous life when we were younger. I know Matt still misses it from time to time. But he's still got ambitions. Oh, yes, he's still got those. Though they must seem very modest alongside the business empire of Rocky Rowland. Yeah, well, that can have its disadvantages. Oh? Well, an international business has to be looked after internationally. Rocky flew off to New York this morning. Concord. Disappointed? Well, it won't get in the way of my work. In fact, it'll give me more time to get on with it. Will he be away for long? I'm not sure. He's got to go on to Hong Kong after that. You wish you could have gone with him? No, not really. I enjoyed the trip I just had a lot. You know, while I was away, I found myself missing you all. Even though I was only gone for a few days. That's very nice to hear. Yeah, put Rocky out of it. Where well, I kept going on about you and Matt and Jeremy. You were mentioned more than a few times this end. Especially by Jeremy. Do you know how he's settled in? Back with his father? No. Relations between the Priors and the Tysons are at a low ebb. It's so stupid having to wait for lawyers to sort it all out. Well, aren't there any other go-betweens you could use? I think it's too late for that now. For Jeremy's sake, I would have done anything to settle it without a court battle. I wish there was some way I could help, but, well, your ex-husband thinks I'm an evil influence by all accounts. <laughs> I'm afraid so. But that's because he doesn't know you. Not much chance he'll ever get to. Which means Jeremy will have to wait for his present until he's back staying with you again. Oh, you bought him something when you were away? Yeah. Rob, I oughtn't to ask you this. Oughtn't you? But would you take a chance and deliver it to Minden Road? Well, I could, I suppose. I know it's unfair, given the way Peter feels towards you. You mean he might turn the garden hose on me? I don't think he'd go that far. But Jeremy must be feeling terribly cut off. If he got your present, I'm sure it would cheer him up. Hmm. Will you? Okay. I'll go around this afternoon. Just my luck if they're all out. Hello, Mr. Tyson. I'm Rob Pengelly. Yes, yes, I remember you. I hope I'm not interrupting anything, but uh, I thought I'd drop by on the off chance. I was away, um, abroad over the bank holiday, and I've been meaning to bring around this present for Jeremy. Aren't you usually working at the restaurant at this time of day? Most days, yeah. But it's a bit slack this lunchtime, so Mrs. Pryor let me off early. In other words, she sent you here. Here's the present, anyway, since it doesn't look like you're going to let me in off the doorstep. I'll make sure he gets it. You do that. And now, uh, if you'll excuse me. And thank you, too. Oh, 
Where's Debbie? She'll be here. Yes. But why isn't she here now? It's very fast, too. Why not go searching for Jill Moon instead? She hasn't shown her face all day. Aye, well, I would if it was my province. But Jill's in charge of her own section. So's Debbie. What? You're obviously finding it hard to forget the old days. But Debbie isn't one of your reporters anymore. Hmm. There's too many changes going on around here, if you ask me. Not still complaining, are you, Morris? Well, I need to get some fun out of life. <laughs> oh, Morris, <laughs> I think you're a perfect stoic. <laughs> Is that some sort of compliment? Afraid so. Is Debbie around anywhere? Um, well, she will be quite soon, I- I'm sure. Ah, he knows where she is, but he's not telling. All right. Well, since it's her first day away, she popped back in her lunch hour to see the baby. Quite right, too. Oh, I ask you. Have a heart, Morris. I wouldn't know what to do with it. And where have you been, McFarlane? Taking a leak. Oh, you're back, Deacon. Yes, why? A lady called for you, but I think it might have been a hoax. Well, what makes you say that? She said her name was Trudy Window. Trudy? Calling me? Now, I know there's a new pop singer called that, but I didn't think you moved in those circles. Dick had interviewed him for the paper a few weeks ago, Gray. Lucky devil. Hmm. Yes. If you could have seen Rob's face when he came back... He tried to be matter-of-fact about it, but he was obviously very hurt. Well, I think that's pushing it a bit. Whose side are you on? Rob's, of course. But all Peter did was not invite the lad into the house. Which is not the normal way to behave towards someone who's brought a present round for your son. I don't happen to agree with him, but I can see why he felt he had his reasons. You mean that ridiculous suggestion it was a put-up job? But it was. It was not. Rob had already been hanging on to the present for several days. He was fed up with not being able to give it to Jeremy. If you hadn't prompted him, I'm sure Rob could have waited a little longer. I mean, till Jeremy was round here. And when is that going to be? Next weekend, I should have thought. Ha! Huh. If Peter deigns to permit it. The way he's behaved, I find that prospect very unlikely. But it's part of the old arrangement. Peter's firmly reverted to the old arrangement, so he's duty-bound to let Jeremy visit you. He'll probably argue that Jeremy's long stay should cancel out weekend visits for the foreseeable future. Sure. I can't help it. I'm so angry. In fact, I think I shall phone Peter right now and give him a piece of my mind. Look, if you get up to that sort of caper, it's yourself you'll be hurting more than him. You mean I should just let him get away with it? I mean, the cooler you play it now, the better your chance when it's being battled out in court. If you get into a slanging match now, you can bet your life Peter will use it against you later. Yes, but I... Look, I know it's unlikely advice from one who jumped in at more deep ends than most, but trust me. All right, Matt, I will. Ah, that's my girl. If only... If only there was some way of making Peter see reason. That's a difficult proposition when you both think you're being perfectly reasonable. But for Jeremy's sake... That argument is going to be used by both sides, with total conviction. And you're going to have to face the fact, you know. Unless... Yes, unless someone who's more or less neutral can speak something. Well, that's what Rob said. Couldn't we find a go-between? I think I might make a phone call to a possible candidate. Hey, you go then, Dickie. One scotch on the rocks. Thanks. Is there any water? Yeah, in that little jug right beside you. Ah. <laughs> well then, uh, are you intending to pay for it? Hmm? Oh yes, yes, of course. Unless you expect to be treated by our man of property over there. Pardon? Oh, I did that. Uh, hello, George. Hello, Cliff. Hello, Dickon. Oh. Uh, may I get you a drink? Oh, that's very kind of you. Um, yes, I'll have a glass of white wine, please. Oh, and there was I hoping for a quiet evening. <laughs> I suppose he's joking. There aren't that many customers, are there? <laughs> no. <clears throat> Not often our paths cross in here, Dickon. Uh, no. No point in trying to get any sense out of him, George. He's in love. Oh. Another 48 people, please, Dickon. 88 altogether. Oh. Ah. In love. Or is that another of Cliff's little jokes? <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd better go and find out. Good Lord. I <laughs> <laughs> so be rushing off the moment you arrive. Of course, it's obviously a matter of some importance. Should we uh, wish you luck? Yes, please. Yeah, all, the best. It. <laughs> all the best, then. Hey, don't let this side down, no, Dickon. And uh, try the other door, but uh, that one leads to the backyard. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a right old state. Who's the young lady in question? Oh, somebody called Trudy. Nobody I know. Oh. 
Um, would, uh, would Jesse happen to be around, Cliff? No, I'm afraid not. It's a night off. Uh, well, uh, I thought you were steering clear of her these days. Oh, I wouldn't put it like that. <laughs> well, uh, how would you put it, George? I, uh, no, no, you're absolutely right, Cliff. But <laughs> I started to get a conscience about it. I have been feeling a bit crowded, but it's rude to avoid her altogether. Well, uh, she's been keeping out of your way as well. Has she? Oh, yeah. Well, she realized she was stretching the friendship, so she's uh, lying low. Oh, dear. <laughs> you see, at first I did find her very good company. Mm, so I noticed. Mm. But is there any way of sorting it out, do you think? <laughs> well, what you need is a good excuse for getting together again. Mm. Oh, but a party. A party, but... I don't know anyone who's giving one. Well, you can. We all can. How about the housewarming? They were housewarming party at number one. Oh, I, I don't now think... Now, come on, George. Lots of people around. The ideal man. Hi. Hello. Mm, you look well. Rosy cheeks. Have I? Mm. Oh, we've been at the Scotch, have we? Only the one. Well, let me get you another. Not for the moment, thanks. Okay. Why don't you take your sweater off? Then you can drape yourself across the sofa. Um. Go on. Then I can drape myself across you. Don't you think we ought to talk first? Oh, I'm sure we can manage both at the same time. Well, if you insist. Mm, I certainly do. <clears throat> There. Isn't that cosy? Yes. Now, what do you want to talk about? Well, first of all, who's that man I met on the stairs? <gasps> you met a man on the stairs? Oh, how scary! Please, Trudy. <laughs> he asked me who I was. And a few other questions. Yeah, he would. Did you give him answers? A few. He took me by surprise. Oh, well, I expect it'll keep him amused. But who on earth was he? Junior Spellgrove. <laughs> the gossip columnist? The very same. Well, what was he doing here? Oh, gathering gossip, would you reckon? He was pestering you? Yeah, but it was an official pester. Tony Nash set it up. The new record's coming out on Friday. Tony just doesn't care how or where we get our publicity as long as it's there. So... He was interviewing you, like I did. No, not quite like you did, chum. I do not end up in bed with every newspaper man who comes around, so don't think it. In fact, you're the only one who ever gained that uh, dubious privilege. I didn't think it was dubious at the time. But later... Well, you weren't very pleasant when I came back again. I was an ace bitch. Hmm. Yes, you were. Hooray! The man stands up for himself. And the man also wonders why you should change your mind again. No. I wanted to see you. So you could put me down again? Is that what you think? And the thought couldn't help crossing my mind. Then why on earth did you come here? I couldn't help hoping I was wrong. You were. I was? But that's... Wonderful? Yes, it is. Hmm, so long as I can get you to keep it all within limits. Of course you can. Hmm... Look, I did try and put you off for your own good, you know. You almost succeeded. If you hadn't phoned me up, I wouldn't have got in touch again. I still don't understand why. You're completely different from anyone in my world. You dipped me straight away that first time you came here. As you walked through the door, I said to myself, and now for something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> but then, when I came back again, I was just the same. Yeah, the same. But still different. That didn't stop you throwing me out. Well, you frightened me. I could see myself getting attached. But why don't you mind that now? I still do. All my instincts tell me I shouldn't have anything to do with your type. You're probably going to fall in love with me. Well, not if it'll ruin things. Pull the other one, mate. And then you're going to start bringing up nightmare notions like marriage. I won't. Promise? I promise. I don't believe you. In that case, perhaps I ought to be going. Yes. Um, you'll have to get off me before I can get up. Mm, I know. <laughs> Problem, that. 
I don't think I'll be able to bring myself to move for a few hours yet. So you might as well lie back and enjoy the music. Do you like it? Mm. Yes. That's Stalin, isn't it? Oh, spot on. I love the melancholy in those tunes. I've been writing lyrics to go with a couple of them to the album I'm recording. Reminds me of you, that melancholy. I don't want to feel melancholy. Oh, too bad, chum, if you're going to stick around with me. Oh. Are you going to stick around? Oh, yes, of course I am. But we haven't really sorted anything out, have we? No. I guess we'll just have to learn to live with the muddle. Ashton and Pryors? Hi, Matt. It's Brad. Ah, oh, thought it might be. Did you get through to him? Well, not to Peter himself. I spoke to Liz. Oh. He's got into hiding, has he? Apparently, he'd gone up to see his father. Oh, yeah. Not an awkward beggar. Was that? Uh, nothing, Brad. Just airing my prejudices. Well, I hope he won't be doing that if I manage to clear the air for him. But if you didn't speak to Peter... Well, Liz took it upon herself to okay the deal. She thought it was a great idea for Peter and the kids to come and spend the day with us. Ah, great. So long as Peter doesn't take it upon himself to back out. Well, I don't see that he should. He enjoyed visiting with us before this whole business blew up. And I told him he could use the boat any time. He doesn't deserve it. Now, see here, Matt. I am receiving Peter as a friend if he does come. Uh, sorry. Thanks a lot, Brad. When will they be coming? Tomorrow? No, Wednesday. Ah, well, in that case, I'll give you a call on Wednesday evening. I think it's best if I call you after they've gone. Yeah, fine. I don't want to blow your cover. Oh, thanks. But um, don't forget, I'm neutral in this matter, despite the fact that you've asked me to intervene. And another thing. What's that? Don't expect miracles. Hey. Mm, what? Rise and shine. What's the time? Well, according to my Mickey Mouse alarm clock, it is six thirty. In the morning? Well, I hope so, chum, or else I've missed a day in the studio. But you're already up and dressed. That's right. I don't sleep much. Oh. Sorry, you can't have everything. But can't you let me sleep on a bit? No, I want you up and out by seven. Ah, so you can give another newspaper interview. Oh, oh, oh. early morning with no less. You definitely don't need any more sleep. Ah. This is cruelty, you know. Yeah, but you love it. Don't I get any breakfast? Yeah, back at your place. And I'm not going to iron your shirt either. I wouldn't expect you to. Good. Now, I know you're going to bring it up, so I'd better beat you to it. I'm not going to be able to see you for a couple of days. Not till Friday at the earliest. And the latest. Why latest as well? Because on Saturday, I'm flying to Scotland. Scotland? Yeah. You know, the last remaining outpost of the Empire. I'm doing a TV appearance there. How long will you be away? <laughs> Don't know. You'll see me on Friday, at least. Oh, you bet. But right now, I want to play my guitar and my piano for a couple of hours. Oh, not simultaneously, of course. Even I'm not that wonderful, yet. Oh, I'd like to stay and listen. Not on your life. Bye-bye. Oh, well, at least let me finish getting dressed. Oh, all right. Just this once. But in future, if you don't get a move on, I shall throw you out naked into the hallway. So there is a future, is there? Ah, is there a future? Philosophers throughout the ages have pondered on such questions as these. Me, I just sing my songs and mind my own business. Here's your tea, Liz. <gasps> oh, how lovely. Mm. Delango? Yes. Oh, give me a thing. Thank goodness I've got you to look after me. Yes. Mm. You don't look too cheerful about it, though. Well, this is wretched trip to Maidenhead. Oh. I wish you hadn't told Brad I'd be delighted to go. But you thoroughly enjoyed your last visit, then. Yes, darling, I know I did, but this time Brad and Jonah, well, they're on the other side, aren't they? Well, I see. You're ready to extend this feud you're building up to anyone who has the slightest connection with the Priors. I'd hardly call Lynn's mother a slight connection. Yeah, but Brad was the one who invited you to have some company on that boat of his. Ah, but why should he, out of the blue? Because he likes you. 
and because both of them would like to see Jeremy before he goes back to school next week. Yeah, well, that's a more likely reason. Why on earth shouldn't they see Jeremy? Uh, because... Oh, you're right. There's no reason at all why they shouldn't. Darling, come here. Hmm? Why? I want to give you a hug. Mm. Mm. I hate seeing you make yourself so unhappy. Well, there's not much I can do to avoid it. I can't help feeling that Jeremy sees everything to do with the priors as being superior to what we can offer. But if you try to cut him off from them, it'll make it even worse. Yes, darling, I know. Heavens, what's that? It's Jeremy. Playing that blessed drum Rob gave him. I ought to give him what for starting up at this time of the morning. Well, it's just a lovely drum. I hope you'll be careful with it. That terracotta bass could easily break. Mm, I live in hope. I don't know what's got into you, Alexis. Seeing you load those vegetables into the van, anyone would have thought you were an old man. I think I am an old man all of a sudden. Oh, there, there, there. Uh, it's no joke, Mr. Breyer. I work so much for you since you have to do all these terrible lunches. I might as well have a long wait beer. Those terrible lunches are going to help finance our expansion, so I'm not complaining. Oh, he's all right, he's all right. You don't need to complain. I do it for you, like everything else. What was that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, better be. Uh, hey, 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 careful. I need to take it out on the blooming gearbox. I'm sorry, my hand is slipped. Yes, along with your brain. Ah, uh, not so, Mr. Breyer. I think I have an idea. Heaven help us. Could Bill go back to going to market every day? What sort of an idea is that? It's only fair. I'm working all hours on two shifts. So well, you work on those shifts, do you? It ruins my social life. From what I know about your social life, I'm doing you a favor. You need the rest. Is what I am saying. I need a rest. Then we're agreed, aren't we? And we're better to rest than at the old bakery. Doing a bit of work. Oh, morning. Morning, Greg. Blimey, he's carrying a copy of the Daily Yuck. I am indeed. And you know who features with him? No doubt you're going to tell us. Mr. Dickon Fur. Oh, yeah. What? Right here, in the junior spellgraph column. Very likely. I quote, Trudy and her news hound. This window strikes again. I'm lost. Then listen on, Debbie, and all be clear. Ahem. <clears throat> Ever since her dulcet tones first brightened our lives... Singer Trudy Window has kept the blinds down. Oh, has kept God. the blinds down on the men behind those bittersweet love lyrics of hers. But when she talked to me, she hinted that silence was ceasing to be golden. Yeah. Secrets sap my energy, she said. Aye, aye. And in the quaint jargon of the music world at it, one might as well let it all hang out. Oh, Are our lyrics that original? <laughs> I haven't a clue. And who should be hanging out at her Bijou Hampstead penthouse? But one thick and fur, journalist and former Deb's delight. Oh. <laughs> You're sure that's not a misprint? He might have meant to put Debbie's delight. <laughs> Watch it, Morris. There's a bit more, starring another friend of us all. Dickon is the brother of Cressida Fur, one time very close pal of dashing commodity consultant Simon Wyde. In fact, Simon tells me romance is being rekindled in that quarter. Oh. These Firths are obviously. Quite a force. Oh, oh, dear. Bad luck, chaps. Well, don't look at me. And I hardly know the lady. Well, I'm glad everyone's being so sensible. After all, we've a busy day ahead of us. Presumably, Dickon will be coming in, in spite of being such a celebrity. Well, it better be. One option is bad enough. Yes. Look, if Jill Moon doesn't show up, we'd better have a talk, Morris. Right. Meanwhile, uh, can you spare me a second, Debbie, please? Sure. On my way. I think I've got over the excitement. Uh, you want to look at my sports story? Oh, I think it's good enough for the front page. Yeah, looks all right. He said, reading it carefully. I'll read it carefully, don't you worry. In fact, at this rate, it might be the only damn thing I'll have to read. Where the hell's everybody got to? I'm here. Hi, Cressy. Hello, Greg. Long time now, see. Who are you kidding? It's true. Not since we went to the pictures after Mark's party. I brought in my film reviews. Have you? I'm surprised you had time to write them. What's that supposed to mean? Think about it. What a charming man. Oh, I think he's referring to this. You're in the gossip column. Oh, oh, I am? You and your brother. Wait, let me see. Oh, <laughs> God. 
if my mother gets to hear about this. But Dickens a grown man. She can't mind about him. No, I mean the bit about me. You could always issue a denial, if it isn't true. Or even if it is, I suppose. <laughs> oh, yes, and who'd print it? I could always slip it in at the bottom of my sports colour. <laughs> You're a great comfort, Gray. I am? That's my, my day. And remember, any other little services I can perform, like holding your hand during the return of the exorcist part <laughs> yes. three, just call me up. I will. Here's your paperback in the meantime. Hmm. Well, there is at least one thing Mr. Spellgrove got wrong. What's this? Deacon was never a Deb's delight. He came with me to one dance about seven years ago and swore never to go to another one. Peter, look, uh, why don't we hang on back here for a moment? But if we're going on the boat... Oh, we will, very soon. But it, it gives Jeremy a chance to clamber around on his own. He loves imagining he's a lone, round-the-world yachtsman. But uh, I expect you know that. No, no, I, I didn't. Oh, well... Kids can be kind of funny about their fantasies, only telling them to folks who aren't part of their day-to-day -day life. Do I take it Jeremy's been telling you things apart from his wanting to sail sail around the world? Well, there was a theme that did occur several times when he stayed here during his half-term. Yes, I can imagine. Why can't I always live with Mummy? No, no, you're wrong, Peter. It was more along the lines of why can't the time spent with each of you be more fairly shared out. Oh, yes. Now, I don't know whether there's any mileage in this possibility from a practical point of view, but isn't it worth you and Lynn getting together and talking it out? No, Brad. That's all you have to say. I'm sorry, but there's no way I could see it working. Lynn's every action in the last few months convinces me that it wouldn't. She probably can't help it. She's been a tough businesswoman for such a long time that she doesn't know how to how to share. The whole thing would still remain a contest for Jeremy's affection. But she's told me, and in fact I think she's proved it practically, that her interest in business is no longer in any way as strong as it used to be. She's a, a changed woman. Yes, of course she's changed. All her ambitions switched towards getting total control of Jeremy. But he's my son as well. Now, uh, shall we join him on the boat? Yeah, of course. But but you will excuse me for interfering, won't you? Because it was done out of a fondness for all parties concerned. I'm sure you meant well, Brad. I only wish I could think the same of whoever asked you to talk to me. Well, I won't deny I received an initial prompting, but I've acted as a neutral. And Peter... Yes? There are less villains in this piece than you or Lynn would have yourselves believe. Come in. McFarlane's got the women's page all under control now. Oh, that's a relief. Thanks for suggesting it, Maurice. Well, serves him right to get landed with it, all those cracks he made about it the other day. Still, I have to hand it to him. He's a very fast worker. Oh, praise indeed. Why don't you call him Grey like the rest of us, Maurice? Oh, maybe I enjoy pronouncing a Scottish name. I don't often get the chance down here. Oh, maybe. Have Dickon got over being famous? Oh, yes. I've kept him far too busy to be able to give it a thought. I'm sure you have. I do love the atmosphere here, you know, when everything's buzzing with activity. Aye, I don't mind it myself. Good. But we do have a problem. The ever-missing moon. Three days now. On none of them has she bothered to ring in, and no one can get through to her as her home number. Mm -hmm. So she's either bedridden or out and about. I can't help thinking it's the latter. If she doesn't show her face by the end of the week, I'm going to have to sack her, Maurice. Good. Should have been done a while ago. Mm, but now there's a good, solid reason for doing it. Green. What the hell do you think you're up to, Alexis? What? You've got a nerve kipping on the sofa at this time of day. Oh, please, Mr. Bryan. They need you out in the plant. Get going. I only sit down for a second. You weren't sitting down. You were lying down. Well, I sit down first, but then I have to lie down because I can no longer be up straight. Well, you better be up straight now, sharpish, or else there'll be trouble. Oh, Mr. Bryan, I must have more rest. I'm exhausted. You can't be exhausted now. You'll have to save it till later. No. I go on strike. How can you go on strike? You're not working. Oh, okay, okay. I get up and go out into the freezer plant. Ah, that's more like it. See, you can stand up when you feel like I it. I don't feel like it. I do it because I am a fool. 
But I tell you, Mr. Breyer, if you don't find extra food for this work, by next week I will have struck. Hello? Ah, burning the midnight oil, Mr. Tully. <laughs> I'll probably still be here at dawn. Come on in, Mr. Tyson. Thanks. It's not the VAT I'm struggling with to sort out this time. It's the big one. Oh, the annual tax, sir. Ah, that's right. <laughs> By the look of things, they'll be damn old up here. I can't seem to find anything that looks like a profit. Oh, dear. If not, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Still, tell me, what have you been up to? It seems ages since I saw you. Well, we've had our ups and downs. Jeremy and I spent this afternoon out on the Thames. Look at you. Yes. Both of us enjoy sailing when we get the chance. I think I told you his step-grandfather has a boat. I knew someone in the family did. Step-grandfather, did he say? Well, it's difficult to know what to call him. My ex-mother-in-law's uh, second husband. That's what he is. <laughs> you do live a complicated life, don't you? Yes, you can say that again. But, amidst it all, this afternoon I was thinking about you. Well, about the business. Not for the first time. I think you would have better things to do. <laughs> Not that I don't appreciate it, of course. Well, I was thinking... If orders for narrowboats have almost come to a standstill... Which they have. Well, is there no way you could switch to playing a car? Oh, I could have done. But? It's good of you to come up with a suggestion, Mr. Tyson. But as far as I can see, sometime in this new tax year, I'll be wrapping up the business altogether. Yes? Alexis let me in. Oh, He's looking like a blooming zombie. What's the matter with him? Terminal exhaustion. Or so he claims. Poor bloke. So, I got your message. What do you want to see me about? I sent that message a couple of days ago. Was it that long? Sorry. I've been quite busy. Like everyone else. Must be a busy time of the year. Hmm. All right, then. You remember we had a chat about you finding extra star for us here, some pals of yours? Yeah. I thought you'd gone off the idea. Well, I might have given that impression, but it was only because of... The general confusion of the last few weeks. And now you're willing to trust me again, are you? I want to, Rob. And that's not only because the situation's getting a bit desperate. Desperate? What's happening? Alexis coming out on strike? How did you know that? I didn't. It was a joke. Oh. Well, it's what the so-and-so's threatening, as it happens. I've tried to treat it as a joke, but I'm beginning to think he means it. Well, you do have him working a lot of hours, and his leg's a bit weak still. Yeah, I know. So, can you find someone for me? Okay, I'll have a word with Vincent Carroll over the weekend. I know they could do with the cash. Ah, oh, good lad. Um, you wouldn't like to do me a favour in return, would you? What's that? Well, they're having a housewarming party at our place tonight, and I've got a feeling Peter Tyson's turning up, because his dad lives there. After that encounter I had with him the other day, I reckon I could do with some moral support. <laughs> That's a backhanded invitation, if ever I heard one. Will you come, though? Yeah, of course I will. Mind you, given the relations between the Prowse and the Tysons, I'll need your moral support as well. Right, it's a deal. Sophie and I are working a shift system, so we're not both away from the restaurant at the same time. So she'll be at the party for the first bit. Well, in that case, I'll pick you up from work in the car. That way we can arrive in force. Oh, dear. Will you be much longer, uh, Miss uh, Richmond? Sorry? I said... Well, oh, that's better. I was asking if you would be much longer. No, Mr. Tyson, I've finished. Did I disturb you? The noise does penetrate. Oh. But it wasn't that. I was wanting to make my way through to the kitchen. George did promise to adapt the old airing cover to make a kitchenette for me. But he still hasn't got round to it. Oh, well, I don't suppose he's had time. It's only a couple of weeks since you both moved in. I am aware of that. But it's a matter of priorities. As far as I can see... Oh. George has become obsessed with the fripperies of life. This party, for instance. Mm -hmm. I consider the whole prospect a total nightmare. Well, don't you like parties? A civilised dinner party is acceptable, but when it comes to a wholesale invasion of one's privacy... Oh, I'm sure people won't be going up to your room, Mr Tyson. Oh, won't they? And what, pray, is there to stop them? Um, well, you could lock the door. And become a prisoner in my own home. Ah, oh, but you won't be inside the room. You'll be down here with the rest of us, enjoying yourself. That is a matter of speculation. Who knows what goings on there might be. I might be forced to absent myself in order to save my reputation. Good heavens. Do you think Mr. Underdown is planning an orgy? No, I do not, young lady. Oh. But given the presence of several members of your generation, 
the event could quite possibly pass beyond George's control. In fact, I think I had better make a telephone call before I make myself coffee. Excuse me. Hmm. I suppose he's going to tip off the vice squad in advance. Oh, hello, Peter. I want to talk to you. Oh, Father. But you're going to be seeing me this evening. Though I ought to warn you, Father, Les won't be able to come. Uh, we can't get a babysitter at such short notice. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. She might have been a stabilizing influence. Listen, Peter. If this party of George's becomes too riotous, I shall want to come back with you to Minden Road. But, Father... No, I insist, Peter. I know there isn't a spare bed, but I shall be willing to sleep on the sofa. One half of a lager. Oh, thanks a lot. Cheers, Morris. Cheers. Oh, you usually have a pint in a Friday, don't you? Yes, I know. But I expect I'll be drinking a fair bit tonight. Ah, yes. Hey, I've been invited to that do by Shudley. Good. Should be fun. Uh, I'm a bit nervous about it. It'll be the first time Trudy's met any of my friends. Aha. Uh -huh. This famous singer of yours is putting in an appearance, is she? I hope so. We're meeting tonight anyway, and nothing else was fixed up. Mm -hmm. Does that mean Junior Spellgrove will be waiting out in the street to see who else turns up? Heaven forbid. <laughs> hey, uh, there's something I'd like to ask you. Will Cressida be there tonight? No. Oh. I thought you might have asked her. I did, but she's got other plans. Oh, well, uh, that's all right then. I thought it would be better if her paths didn't cross. What's she up to instead? She's seeing Simon. Perhaps you shouldn't have asked. Well, I might as well know. Us newspaper men have to get hold of the facts, don't we? We're in here, George. We? Good Lord. <laughs> it's the Ladies' Committee of G Underdown Entertainment Limited. Hello, Shirley, Sophie, and Jessica. Hello, George. I thought I'd risk popping across to see if you needed an eye and getting things ready, but it looks as though you're doing all right for yourself. Well, I'm sure we can... Uh... Find something for me to do? <laughs> it's very nice to see you again, oh, anyway. Thanks. That's made my day. Yeah. I gave the place an extra thorough clean this morning. Oh, thank you, Sophie. <laughs> yes, the place looks Absolutely spotless. Oh, great. <laughs> Seems a pity when one thinks of the cigarette ash and the peanuts. So, if you can give us an idea of what you want done with the furniture, we can get cracking. Right -o. Um, <laughs> do you know my mind's gone blank? No, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Look, I tell you what, how about having the big table over there against the window, and then if she feels like it, Jessie can start laying out the food. I'm ready and willing. Yeah, and here's a paper tablecloth. I think you ladies might as well take complete charge. I'll just do what I'm told. <laughs> In that case, George, mm -hmm. would you like to answer the door? Oh. Right away. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Mr. Underdown. Mrs. Tandy. Yes. Uh, I thought you might need some help in preparing for this evening. Hey, Maurice. What's that? Where are you sneaking off to? Oh, I was uh, looking for somewhere to kill some time in. Oh, I mean in the pub, no doubt. Well, seemed the most likely place. Look, this is a highly respectable social event you are coming to, you know. I am sure it is. Which means we don't want you getting tanked up before you arrive. <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do instead? Go home and put on my suit? No, but you can give me a hand with the booze. Ah, now you're talking. Yeah, but I'm talking about carrying it, not drinking it. Ah. Follow me. Where are we getting it from? The wagoners. Well, I had to order it from Donald Fitzroy. Keep him sweet about me and Jessie having the night off. Oh, uh, she's the woman Shirley was teasing you about when I had supper with you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, there's nothing between us, though. More's the pity. <laughs> she's a very nice piece of stuff. All right, well, when do I get to meet her then? Yeah, as soon as we get back to the house. How do I look? Hmm? Uh, quite stunning, ravishing, even just plain okay. <laughs> Sorry, Sophie. Is that a new dress? Oh, God, you noticed. It's very nice. Yeah. Well, I couldn't really afford it, of course. But the party gave me the excuse I needed. <laughs> it's a very slender excuse, mind you, but um, I won't be there very long. Why not? Well, I have to go off to the restaurant so that Rob can appear magically in my place. Well, I'll walk you there when the time comes. Oh, don't be daft. You, you just stay here and enjoy yourself. Huh. And what's the matter, Dickon? Nothing. Ah, oh, now, come on. You can tell me, can't you? Oh, Dickon, let me give you a cuddle. 
<laughs> you look like little boy lost. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I've been an idiot, that's all. I had a firm arrangement to see Trudy tonight. Oh. Of course, I was going to ask her to come here. Oh, a pop singer amongst us lot. I thought she might have enjoyed a change from her usual crowd. But she didn't fancy it. I didn't get the chance to find out. When I rang up to tell her about it, some man answered the phone. Told me she was busy and to try again next year. But it, it could have been anyone answering. Maybe maybe she didn't even know he was doing it. I doubt it. She's messed me about before. Oh, never mind, love. You'll find someone else. Wish it could be someone like you, Sophie. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry about that time in the no, cinema. No, no, but... Dickon. Look, you know, you know there's a limit to, to how involved I can get. Well, at least we could look after one another when things are going badly. <sighs> I'm not sure what I'm getting myself into, but... Uh, oh, well, perhaps we could. <laughs> at least you've broken down one barrier for me. Hmm? Tonight is the first time I've willingly touched a man since I was a child. George, I hope you don't expect me to dance to that. <laughs> it's nearly finished. Oh, good. <laughs> and how are you, Mr. Tyson? Oh, bearing up, dear lady, under the strain. Oh, dear. Uh, what, what, what's going wrong? My catering arrangements. Yeah, aren't you getting enough to eat? Barely. Oh. I don't have a kitchen of my own, you know. George says one will be installed, but when... Yes, well, he was let me bring something hard for you. Oh, I... good heavens. My son has arrived. Oh, will you excuse me? Yes, I must have a word with him. Of course. Peter. Ah, hello, Father. Uh, 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 my telephone mm -hmm. call. I think I may have misjudged the nature of the proceedings in hand. Oh, I'm really fed up, Morris. You know, nobody's asked me for a Harvey Wallbanger all evening. Honestly, you too. <laughs> What's the matter, sir? You were Morris uh, hanging over the drink table. Well, I was making sure no one has too much. You yes, take right? yourself. Yeah, I know. How about circulating, eh? Circulating? Yes. And you can circulate some drinks, too, while you're at it. Oh. People seem to be enjoying themselves, Jessie. Oh, yes. Me in particular. Oh, I'm glad. Nearly everyone seems to have arrived. I don't see Sophie or Dickon. Oh, they were here, but she had to go off to work. Ah. And he's walking her there. No. Oh, they make a nice couple. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I know for a fact Dickon has interests elsewhere. <laughs> They're only good friends. <laughs> like us? Yes. Hello, Morris. Haven't seen you since, uh... Cressida and I came to dinner at your house. <laughs> Lots of water under the bridge since then. Yes. Things all right at the paper, are they? Well, what does your missus say? Oh, I think she's pretty optimistic. Oh, well. Now then, can I fill your glass for you? I'm the acting unpaid barman. Oh, uh, thank you. Shirley uh, and Cliff, oh, hello, George. I'd like to tell you, I've decided we might as well scrap the idea of the outside basement door. Yeah? Yes. Should the time come when you want to sell, we'll have to make alterations in the main hall up here. Well, are you sure? Yes. That's how it's done in a lot of the other houses around here, you know. But the uh, the agreement stands, doesn't it? Oh, it certainly does. Oh, yes, fantastic, George. George, you're a smasher. Come here. Oh, oh. Have you been away, Mrs. Brewer? How do you mean, Mr. Tyson? You don't seem to have crossed our threshold for, for, for a few days. I decided you all deserved a rest oh, from me. I discovered are. George can fend for himself pretty well. Apparently, he's a very good cook. So I won't be bringing any more meals across. Oh, I see. As yet, I have no separate cooking facilities of my own, you know. Ah, uh, just our luck, Rob. What's that? Oh, let's kill Here we are, two thirsty yeah. men and P. Tyson Esquires hovering bang in front of the drinks table. Shall we brave it, then? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. He's standing there with his Hello, Peter. Oh, absolutely. Oh, hello, Matt. Any chance of me and my young friend getting through to the uh, wine, eh? Yes. Yes, of course. Red or white? Red, please. Uh, white for me. So, how's tricks? Oh, fine. 
Though I, uh, I could do with a little less of the moral pressure. Oh, is that what you call it? Well, apologies for any upsets caused. Cheers. Cheers. As far as we're concerned, everything's back to the old arrangement, you'll be glad to hear. Till it gets sorted out once and for all. Oh, well, that suits me. So, I'll be over on Sunday to fetch Jeremy for lunch with us. Okay. Wagoner's Walk was written by Terry James and directed by Anton Gill and Penny Lester. There'll be another omnibus edition next Sunday afternoon, and tomorrow's episode of Wagoner's Walk is at five minutes past five here on Radio 2. It's six o'clock. And we join Chris Aldred at the Radio 2 News Desk.